1996 was the year it hit Japan and went crazy. Back then it was just called Pocket Monsters. Top left of the first three games that came out. It was then 1998 when it hit the US. Those two games, the red and the blue on the top line, that's what came out, 1998, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, and it just took the world by storm. There has been a lot more games since then, but to give some background as to what the actual Pokemon are and the gameplay, here's a little video. As the game begins, players are allowed to choose between one of three starter Pokemon, a fire type, a water type, and a grass type. After choosing their new battle pet, the player can now explore various towns and environments, battling, capturing, leveling up, and evolving a wide variety of Pokemon, with the ultimate goal being to defeat eight Pokemon gym leaders, stop an evil corporation, and battle your way to becoming the very best. No one ever was. Now that was the plot of the game, but the real goal, the true end goal of the game, was to try and catch all 151 Pokemon. Now some of you are probably thinking, the fuck did I just see? None of that made any sense whatsoever. Ultimately, what though goes on in the game is you are the Pokemon trainer, and you, buddy, you get around and you're walking around the suburbs, and then bang, Pokemon appear, and you throw a Pokeball at them, and you collect them, and you want to collect 150. Some are rare, some are everywhere. At the moment, there are Zubats all over this place in the game. <laughs> I can see them with my mind. And so they're very, very common, and then there's some really rare ones like Aerodactyls that I caught one on the pier three nights ago. Lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> the whole I'm ecosystem is enormous. This is Pokemon, just a, a touch of what is going on. This one franchise boasts 25 main series games, mountains of spin-off games, a 19 season anime, 18 films, a long running trading card game, and a seemingly endless amount of toys and other merchandise. Pokemon, more so than virtually any other video game franchise in existence, has managed to completely transcend the realms of being just a video game series, becoming a worldwide phenomenon pretty much overnight. After two whole decades, the unbridled popularity of this RPG series has stood strong, arguably without a single misstep. But really, what else can you expect from a series that has inspired such wide-eyed wonder and nostalgia in both the young and old for generations. Pokemon knew exactly what it wanted to be back when it started in 1996, and since then it has only gotten bigger, better, and more adventurous while remaining true to that foundation laid 20 years prior. And with so many more new and exciting experiences already on the way, it is clear that the Pokemon series will continue to entertain and inspire for generations to come. One of the key points there was the mention of nostalgia. I'm 34 years old. First game came out when I was like 15, 16. I played at school. I got teased at school. I still had so much fun. The reason Pokemon Go for people of my age, it's incredible, is because it's like being reunited with like this old game and these friends, these Pokemon that I know back to front and I love. So, when Pokemon Go came out, it changed my life. It changed a lot of people's lives. Let's have a look at the actual gameplay. On the left hand side screen, what you're seeing is the overall gameplay. You are in the centre. You're that little person just there. There's like metrics down here. Overall, this map is a real life GPS location Google map, pretty much. It was created, uh, it was an old school, it was an old game called Ingress. That basically is the platform, which is why Pokemon Go got launched and it already had all these locations and the map was right and it was very sophisticated because it was built on infrastructure from a uh, game called Ingress. You go around and you search like Nolan was doing. You literally just walk around the place like this looking for Pokemon and then your phone will vibrate when it finds a Pokemon and then inside gets a little warm and fuzzy and you're like, oh my god, Pokemon are close by. <laughs> You then, this one here, Squirtle, very cute, very cute, quite rare as well. You click on Squirtle and then the, the screen turns into an actual camera. So your phone now looks at the real world and Squirtle is inside the real world. And so you're standing there and you're like, where is the cheeky little fucker? Where do you go? Where do you go? And then you find him and you grab your Pokeballs and you throw them at him. And you can do trick curves and so on and ultimately, you throw a ball, you catch him, he's now in your collection. You can build him up, you can make him better, you can battle, and not in the sense of like Street Fighter where it's like, hurdle, can hurdle, can do the like kick. It's a little more turn by turn. 
Chun Li butterfly kick, such a wonderful move. <laughs> Pokemon can be found in a variety of places as long as the Pokemon Go app is open. Pokemon will appear on the game's GPS map, and your phone will buzz to indicate when a new one is nearby. If you want to catch it, simply tap the Pokemon to initiate the capture phase. And that's why people are walking into the middle of the road without looking. <laughs> Quite seriously, I've had instances where I'm like, oh shit, it's an Aerodactyl. And oh wow, that's Ocean Avenue that I've just walked into. <laughs> so keep an eye out. Now honestly, when you're driving and so on, if you see people walking around uh, with their phones, to give you an idea to help you know who's playing Pokemon, there are two signs to look for. The first sign is that they're awesome. <laughs> the second sign... The second sign is that they're walking along and they're often flicking and they will be changing direction. They've got a massive smile on their crazy face. So keep an eye out for them, don't run them over, because they are good people. <laughs> This is my collection. Behold its beauty before your eyes and bow upon it. 151 Pokemon to collect. I haven't got many of them. Now, what we're actually looking at is these are ones that I have caught. The ones that are coloured Charmander, gorgeous little thing. These are ones that I've grabbed, I'm now training up. These shadows are ones that I've seen but have run away from me. Therefore, bastards. <laughs> You can grab some eggs and like basically what happens here, these force you to walk around. So not only are people walking around looking for Pokemon, in order to hatch eggs, you actually have to walk around. So 2.15 kilometers, once I've completed that one, I'm gonna start a new egg. Inside these eggs, sometimes a special Pokemon, sometimes are those Zubats that we talked about before that are everywhere and I'm not a big fan of, so I don't care about them all that much. There's, that's the, that's what a Zubat evolves into. Golbat. Oh, I'm going down the rabbit hole of explaining this far too much. He's shit. Ponyta, really cool though, and I'm a big fan of Electrobuzz. So, overall, this here is the big screen. How people are going to make money, and they're gonna make a shit ton of cash, is because if you can make a pokey stop at your restaurant, at your business, at your retail outlet, you're going to have so many people come there because they come along, whenever you see these blue pokey stops, if you go within something like 20 metres of them, you can click it and spin it and it spits out pokeballs and it spits out other things that you can collect. So you have to go around in order to keep playing, you have to go to pokey stops and get more like uh, digital goods. That's a gym in the background, which is where you can go and battle. There's a couple down at the pier, really good fun. Um, how also, one of the most ingenious things about this game, very clever, these pokey stops, you can buy things called lures. You can then go to a pokey stop and you can plug in a lure and then anyone in the area benefits from it because a lure starts to lure more Pokemon to that area. And the reason I hang out down at the pier, there's about nine pokey stops on the pier, everyone plugs in lures, Pokemon everywhere, high fives all around, best place in the world. <laughs> to give you an idea as to how incredible it is down at the pier at the moment, here's a video. It's midnight here at the Santa Monica Pier. Everybody's just going around collecting Pokemon. We had a whole bunch of people down there. A whole bunch of people down there. And now all of a sudden. I guess you call it a swarm. It's incredible. This game only came out six days ago. Yeah, it has had this type of effect on society. Everyone's smiling. I've seen more high fives than most major concerts. There's more people here than Saturday. It's midnight on a Tuesday. And everyone is so honestly, people walking around, you saw in there, people are actually high-fiving each other. If you get a rare Pokemon, you not only get it, it may appear for everyone else. And so something happened, I didn't record it because I was too busy chasing it. In the car park of the, of the um, pier at about 1.30, someone literally just yelled out, Aerodactyl! And 300 people went home. <laughs> it was one of those moments that will stick with me for life. <laughs> like, I've done some weird shit and that was up there. 
So it's really, really community based and this is why those who are into the game are deeply into it because we're finding other people who are into it. I can go for a bike ride and if I see a group of people standing around, I just start chatting to them. It's amazing. I have distilled the value of Pokemon Go. This is the equation. This is the equation to earn $8 billion in a few days on your market capitalization. Nostalgic brand equity and innovative technology. That is how it is working and that is the power of it. Money, 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 money. <laughs> Lastly, there are hacks, of course, there are hacks. As I said, you have to go walking around. Some people strapped their phone to a bike wheel and tricked it. Some people put it on a turntable and that tricks the phone into thinking that you're walking around. Someone strapped it to a drone. Pretty incredible. Um, I also built a hack as well. I've programmed this robot to trick Pokemon Go into thinking that I'm walking around the neighbourhood. Yeah, you're probably right. Maybe it's a little cheating, but let's be honest, Pokemon Go is the digital equivalent of crack cocaine, and I would do far filthier things to get a charlism than program a robot. <laughs> I, will, I will do some nasty shit. <laughs> So overall, that's Pokemon Go. Honestly, if you haven't played it, maybe have a play. I'm going to tell you, if you don't have that nostalgic love for it, you may not appreciate it for what it is. Please do understand, this game has changed things. It is incredible. It's not the most amazing technological game, but it is incredible for what it's doing, and I think it is the starting point of an absolute new revolution of games, whatever it is, but world-based what, games. What's the download the of these so far? I have no idea. Someone says it's bigger than Snapchat. <laughs> it's daily users are more than Tinder and Twitter. Yeah. That's amazing. Why are you upset with it, Nolan? What? Why are you upset with it? Because I designed this game four years ago. Mm. Four years ago? Yeah. And you're it's upset? It's called Evil Monkey Game. And uh, used augmented reality. Well, theoretically, I mean, we had, if you remember, Bo, who spoke here from mm. Singularity University, he created this three years ago also. Yeah. So I think it's all around execution. And marketing? And the brand really helps. It really does. Yeah, the brand. So this is it. Who's going to try? Who's got a hand up over there? I've got a question. Uh, once you capture one of the Pokemon, how does it get away from you? Ah, when you're going to grab them, they can disappear. If they've got like a really strong CP rating, which is like their overall rating, sometimes you throw a ball and, you, and it looks like you're caught him. And the fuck, it breaks out. Right. Damn. Then you go and cry for a little bit and then go back to Great, you don't have a girlfriend, right? No, not at the moment. No. <laughs> That's why I have a robot and Alexa, the Amazon AI. I get them to do some freaky shit. <laughs> Thank you.